Hey guys, this is Sage Valentine and this is my review of 24 Live Another Day Season 1 Episode 10 entitled From 8pm to 9pm Tonight was a very crazy night for television between this and <laughs> Under the Dome but the ending of this episode threw me for a loop. So let me just narrow it down for you guys and get it started. Alrighty. So Jack finally tells Kate what's going on with the device and how Navarro has it and they're searching for Navarro. Navarro basically meets up with his contact, which we all know is Adrian Cross. Okay. Chloe questions Adrian about what exactly is going to happen. Like, what do you need this device for? And he starts talking about this, this save the world type concept thing, which I'm iffy about. Chloe's iffy about. Everybody's like, how are you going to do this? And I'm going to, you know share the info with everybody and give everybody a weapon and start like it's just a, a recipe for disaster basically for that weapon for everybody for the united states for all these countries it's just a really big weapon it's a really big recipe for disaster okay chloe learns that navarro worked with adrian to get this device Alrighty, here we go so jack has this tactical team they're chasing it down i mean it's like this whole fight between them. Navarro does this fake out. He ends up at Liverpool Stadium, some type of st the train station. And um, Chloe and Adrian escape away on the train. All right. And since Navarro gave Adrian the um, device, Adrian had no plan B for Navarro. So Navarro was basically caught by <laughs> Jack and the rest of the team. Okay. Here we go. Um, Jack is questioning with Chloe, wondering was she biding her time? Is she playing us? Kate feels the same way. So Ritter becomes a station head now that Navarro is axed out after what he did and his possible connection to the death of Jordan. So, uh, yeah. So Heller is basically talking about, listen, I'm President Heller. I'm going to step down after all this. Basically, he can't handle it. I don't blame him personally. I'm sad to see him stepping down and giving it to the VP. But um, I don't blame him since that chick almost killed him, basically. And thank God for Jack Bowen. Okay. Mark comes busting in, saying Ritter's calling. Tells him about the device being gone. And uh, Navarro took it. And Bauer is trying to get him. And the device basically can break through all command and control systems all over the globe. Like, just start World War III, basically. So, this other dude is working, like, through Jordan Station. Found out that Jordan came upon some type of documents, which were, like, these Chinese secrets or secrets or something that supposedly Kate's husband sold to the Chinese, but in actuality, Navarro, see, I said Navarro had something going on with the Chinese or something. Navarro framed Kate's husband, and he was the one that sold everything to the Chinese. Okay. So, Kate's pissed off. Jack wants to get in there and interrogate Navarro and be done with it. Kate wants um, Navarro dead. And, like, Ritter's like, listen, you can't touch him. And Jack was like, I wasn't asking. That was me being courteous. I said, all right, Jack. <laughs> I was like, okay, Jack. Jack is on a roll today. So that's one out of three crazy things he said this episode. So Jack goes to comfort Kate. It's a sweet little scene. I totally shipped those two together. They're badassery. I totally shipped them. So we find out that Kate's husband killed himself. Um... Because Kate really, I think Kate went to see him, but she was angry at him. They must have had some type of fight. So Kate was like, Kate basically kind of, I guess she told him she wasn't going to come see him again. And then he hung himself in his cell after that. Alrighty. So basically, Jack gets in the room with Navarro as per, and listens to what Ritter said. Like, can't really touch him. And it all goes wrong because... First of all, Navarro wants immunity, and I'm like, here we go, another crazy God, person with terrorist connections that wants Jack to get him like immunity. Like, how long is this list going to be, to be honest? But anyway, Navarro reveals he didn't know anything about working with Adrian Cross. Um, so Jack is just, like, done with it. He's over with it. He takes his gun. 
like slams Navarro's hand, like breaks almost every bone in it. I believe it was his left hand, might have been his right hand, just breaks every bone in his hand. Ritter comes in and he says, I have to make this deal. He's like, leave it up to Heller. Okay, so Mark Boudreaux and Ron, um, he tells Ron, listen, we have to draft up this thing for immunity to get Navarro on immunity. Audrey comes in. She's apologizing to Mark, you know, for snapping at him. And here comes Mr. Mark Boudreaux, of course, flipping the script on that one, basically saying, you know, you basically changed because Jack's here. Salty as always. Jealous as always. He's like, there's just a distance since he got here, and clearly you have not resolved your feelings for him. I was like, Mark, once again, a mess. Once again. So Mark feels like them being married with some type of obligation that needs to be honored. I was like, Mark, um... See, I told you, Mark Boudreaux is a little tad, a little bit shady. <laughs> He's a little strange for me. But anyway, so... To get revenge, he calls the Russians, and um, they basically kind of threaten him a little bit, saying that, like, maybe we should contact the U.S. State Department and tell them what you did, and you'll be up for treason. And Mark basically gives them a shoe and tells them now to find uh, Jack, gives them some type of comm code that the CIA has. It's a secret comm code just so they can get to Jack, so as long as he he's going along with this, as long as his involvement with them is unknown however however the russian dude said if this goes well and we get him then you're no longer involved in this so adrian's still working with these people that used to work with chloe okay and um they they escape out of the tunnel because i don't know if i told you guys they got off the train they're escaping out of the tunnel and i'm like <laughs> I'd be so pissed if I was riding that train and the stupid train stopped. Like, oh my god, I'd be so mad. Like, that's such a traffic jam. But anyway, they get into this BMW. It looked like a BMW to me. And um, Chloe decides to take the device and try to, like, run with it to the nearest dude, which was a smart idea. But unfortunately, it doesn't work as Adrian starts firing at the truck dude. The truck dude pulls off. So... Basically, Kate sneaks down, and this is Kate's big scene of just straight and utter just badassery. Kate just goes in that room, busts up, like, turn around, turn around, makes them all turn around, puts the gun up on his neck like this, and, and so Kate, along with Jack, they basically play a, play some type of, like, I would call it a, um, pull the wool over Navarro's eyes. Navarro thinks he's about to die, thinks Kate's about to kill him, or Jack's about to kill Kate, and it's a whole big mess, so he gives up the code for this device. We find out that the president's being um, briefed on what's going on with this device and everything, and Navarro put a tracking chip on this device so that Bauer can lead the team and they can go get it. Mark finds out and Mark is like too upset. So Kate and Jack are like riding to go get this device and Kate is sad because she felt like her husband felt that she abandoned him right before he died or he killed himself and then Jack reflects upon his friend that died. I believe he's talking about Tony Almeida and um how he went through something once he died and everything, and he just, it really haunted him. It hurt him. So, Chloe and uh, Adrian, they make it back to headquarters with all the people that they used to work with, with the whole hacking thing. And they see that they're all dead. And who walks into this building? And when I tell you, I was screaming at the top of my lungs, Chang, Chang Ji, I believe I'm saying his last name correctly. If you don't know who Chang is, guys, y'all, you guys got to get up on 24. Chang was a pain in the butt and albatross when the Chinese took Bauer. Chang had a lot to do with that. If I'm rem hopefully I'm remembering this correctly, which I believe I am. Chang had a whole lot to do with that. Okay, so. Chloe finds out that Adrian was working with Chang, and Chang immediately recognizes Chloe. Of course he should, with all the mess that happened with that. So Chloe says she won't help Chang. She has Adrian shot in the leg. He's like, next one's going in the skull. <laughs> it's like Chang, same old Chang as always. So Mark tries to fix what he did, but it's a little bit too late because, um, well, I'm getting to that part. But anyway, 
Ritter's calling up, said another thing Jack said that's pretty awesome. Jack says, stay focused on your job. Worry less about me. I was like, you know, Jack tonight with his badass quotes. I love it. So anyway, we find out Chloe planted, she's trying to decode the um, device and she planted a virus, but she was being shadowed by some other dude. Oh, poor Chloe. Chloe's just messed up all this season. And uh, they basically opened the door for this whole charge. Now, Adrian Cross is the most evil person in the world for revealing this. More Okay, um, Chloe's husband, Morris, and their son, Prescott, Chloe believed, that's why she started doing all this stuff, that they died because of her. No, they died by accident. And Cross knew this and didn't tell her. I was so pissed at him. So the Russians hit Bauer's car, Jack's car, as he's, like, driving to go get the device, flip the car up the whole nine yards, this whole shoot him up thing. They're firing back and forth. Chang arms this nuclear device. This thing was basically was set to send some type of memo to the United States to shoot a couple missiles towards the Chinese carrier Chang Yang and its hit. And that's the end of this episode. This episode nearly gave me a heart attack, a stroke. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, what is going on with this season? We have two episodes left. Dear Lord, just stress all around. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I have to work on my review for Under the Dome because that's another brand of crazy. I'm so glad that you guys have tuned in. You're enjoying my reviews. Um, definitely. Make sure you check me out at Sage Valentine. Um, Sage Valentine also on uh, Twitter and Google Plus, same name. Also, check out my other reviews. I've got Walking Dead review. I have to finish Under the Dome. Big Brother. I've got Extant coming soon. I've got other shows just popping out and coming soon. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have a great uh, weekend. I love you all. Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Under the Dome is next. Bye, guys. <laughs>